Wow, what's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and today I'm gonna to do something a little different, which is predict how much money the Tupac movie will make based on the fact that the marketing is not as good as it should be. Why am I doing this video in the first place? Well, I actually tweeted out uh, last week that I thought the marketing could be better, and someone actually called my bluff of actually doing a video, so I'm gonna do it. I'm using Stray Outta Compton as a reference point because most people are going to do that anyway. These kind of movies get pushed in the same box for a variety of reasons, but that's besides the point. So let's start here. Now obviously Stray Outta Compton is beating all eyes on me in all areas and it's been out way longer so there's been way more time to, you know, build up. But most of the followers, a majority, would be during the time leading up to the release and shortly thereafter. But the Facebook part, that's where they're beating all eyes on me by far and large. And the thing is, if I had to choose a place to market a movie to a mass global audience, especially, Facebook would be the best place. Twitter for marketing, eh, kind of irrelevant, wouldn't put too much into it. Instagram could be gold, but I would do it leveraging influencers a lot more so than, you know, just trying to build up your own fan page. Unless you do something interesting, but I wouldn't get into those recommendations for now. So while we're on social media, we might as well address the elephant in the room. Viral marketing. One of the biggest parts of Straight Outta Compton's campaign was their viral marketing. Their whole Straight Outta campaign that allowed people to insert whatever reference something personal to their life straight out of Decatur straight out of whatever your football or school is or straight out of whatever 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 that was something that was just brilliant as far as a marketing plan goes it was viral primarily pushed through Facebook hence that big following which is why they were able to really get people talking for them all eyes on me does not really have much like that what they did do I found was a filter the filter that they did was basically all eyes on me somebody can insert their picture into it but in my opinion it's a little bit too intensive you would have to go to this website that I just found because I was literally researching to do this video and the fact that it's not native to a Facebook Instagram or some other social platform is very limiting because you want to go where people's behavior already is not go to some other site for them to get something then bring back to the sites that they actually care where the information is that they're already using like a Facebook or Instagram heavily. And on top of that, the idea of just having all eyes on me, kind of the main logo and typeface of the movie with someone's picture on it, it's a little lazy. I get the whole play on words, all eyes on me, because people could basically use it for their own vanity. They probably thought people would be taking pictures of themselves looking all fresh in the, on the way to the club or maybe working out looking swole or girls be taking some of those pictures like this. But you haven't really seen that because it's a little too forced. So a recommendation if you are going to do the filter thing could be, hey, Demetrius Shipp Jr. already looks like Tupac. You can even play on that and apply it to everybody else. Let them look like Tupac by maybe actually doing some kind of weird filter on Snapchat where people actually end up looking like Tupac or that might be a little bit too intensive. I don't know what the budget is for marketing, but it might be a lot easier to have a bandana and nose ring and maybe even some tattoos in a filter for Snapchat. Of course, when you allow the bandana and things like that, you can also have our eyes on me somewhere on the side. So when they share it, you have that branding as well. People already have the behavior of taking Snapchat filters and then moving them over to Instagram and other places and sharing them. Once again, you want to go where behavior is already taking place instead of creating a side website or something like that where you have to have people migrate, use energy and marketing to push people to that website and then hope they go there just to do something else. So anyway, overall, I give Straight Outta Compton an A plus in viral marketing and all eyes on me, I'd probably give a D. Well, not probably actually, I just did. But moving on, now let's talk about novelty. I remember I actually last year was able to see Demetrius and um, Benny Boom talk at Snake Nation in Atlanta and I remember when Demetrius came in I was like yo this is weird because Tupac is just somebody I expected to never see in my life. The dude was dead when I was like five or I don't know I can't remember how old I was. Of course intellectually I know Demetrius isn't Tupac but my mind almost couldn't compute the fact that he wasn't when I'm looking at him. It's like I know Tupac is dead but 
damn, that is Tupac right there. And that's definitely something they've leveraged by letting him get those interviews, which is actually typical. I'm wondering why Demetrius wasn't able to get on The View and Ellen, or maybe he will after this video because there's still some days left leading to. I'm doing this prematurely, by the way. You do have some X factors that could really help the Tupac movie, which is one, the actual Tupac legacy, the myth, the man. It far supersedes NWA's legacy. NWA, yes, they were completely impactful for their time, but Tupac, what he did as one man, it just eclipsed that as a whole on a worldwide scale. So people having that interest, investment, and intrigue in Tupac as a character could just overcome and make it null and void that some of the marketing didn't hit the target like it should have. And by the way, an unexpected X Factor for Straight Outta Compton, I believe was actually Ice Cube, really due to his long success in the movie industry and what he created and crossed over as a just character producer, especially after Ride Along and things like that. Him having that brand that he had built and experience in the industry, I believe played a large part in the success of the movie in ways that I can't measure from the outside superficially. And then another small factor worth mentioning is you did have Kendrick Lamar represent the resurgence of Compton in that time. So the stars just seemed to align. And he did an interview with the Straight Outta Compton cast. That got millions of views with Billboard, maybe three million if I'm remembering correctly. And then you add the fact that the city of Compton has this myth around it that had already been established in past decades. Those kind of things play a role as well, which leads to another recommendation for all eyes on me. If they could have found a way to pair the relevancy of Tupac with current culture because you have people like Lil Yachty, right? Who represents a very real generation now who's like, I don't really know Tupac like that. I didn't really grow up on him. He's not the GOAT to me. It's just a reality as time moves on. So if there was a way to use interviews or some kind of content that actually leveraged those influencers who were just old enough to understand the impact and influence of Tupac and bridge the gap between them and the other generation that looks up to them, then that could be a powerful way to bridge the gap and get those new people to really move. And because of that though, the lack of that, I mean, I think it'll take a toll on the full potential of what the numbers could be. Particularly when you couple that with the lack of viral marketing that not only missed that younger generation, but the viral marketing piece would have been the piece that actually extended over into the more pop culture, you know, the less, it connected culture that were really probably drawn in from that straight out of campaign. And finally for a prediction, Straight Outta Compton did $60 million in its opening weekend and $40 million in foreign markets. I believe that All Eyes On Me would probably only pull in 30 to $40 million its opening weekend. But at the end of the day, I think it'll bring in more money from foreign markets at 50 to 60 million ultimately. Now for that final actual prediction, I have to consider X factor number two, word of mouth. Let's just say that this movie is really good. That's gonna bring the movie legs on the tail end. Also, although it might have a relatively low opening weekend, it can make up for that on the back end just for being a darn good picture. I'm really hoping it is. By the way, I actually hope I'm wrong in my lower predictions of this movie. I'm going to see it with my sister and my dad. Opening weekend, I've seen less than five movies on opening weekend in my life. But that's how much I really hope for the success of this movie, Care for Two Bob's Legacy. But just objectively speaking, I'm going to have to max it out at a potential $150 to $175 million ultimately in the box office. I know that's kind of a range, but I want to leave space for some factors. And keep in mind, that means this movie has to be really, really good and have some great back-end marketing. The marketing does not stop here because I'm not gonna lie, I do have a fear that it'll only hit around, you know, 120, 130 million, but they'll make their money back. I think the money's gonna be made back regardless, for sure. Tupac's too big of a legacy and people have said too many good things so far. Anyway, that is what it is. Back to our regular music marketing scheduled program after this video. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.